So I guess because it's Cara Delevingne and, you know, like fashion supermodel, I was trying to do this like editorial messy hair aesthetic thing, but practically I just can't see anything. How do they do this? What's the point? Oh my God, hey, welcome back to my theater themed YouTube channel. My name is Mickey Joe, and I am obsessed with all things theater. I am an independent theater critic, pundit and content creator here on social media. And this is my theater themed YouTube channel where I make videos about the shows that I get to go and see. I create review content. I cover theater news. I create theater going vlogs. And today I'm going to be telling you all about my recent trip to the Gala Night of Cabaret. This program's further away than I thought. Excuse me, it's also huge. That's right, I got to go back to the Kit Kat Club for what I think is my sixth visit to the show for the recent Gala Night performance celebrating the brand new cast. A cast which includes Olivier Award winning Curious Instant of the Dog in the Nighttime alumnus Luke Treadaway, Newsies and Legally Blonde alumnus Michael Humka Lindsay, as well as supermodel, actress and bona fide celebrity Cara Delevingne who takes over the role of Sally Bowles. Now I made a video talking about this casting when it was first announced saying I felt like this could actually go very well and so much of Sally Ball's character felt like it was within Cara Delevingne's reach, like it wouldn't have to be too much of a transformation. And subsequently I've had many, many comments and messages asking if I was planning to go and see her in the role. Well, now I have had the chance. So I am going to be letting you know what I thought of Cara Delevingne's performance as Sally Bowles. I'm also going to be giving you a little bit of context about the show and about this production specifically and what you might expect if you've never been to see Cabaret at the Kit Kat Club in the West End before. But this isn't a new review of the show as such because it's a little silly to re-review a production like this every few months because they have like short contracts for their leading stars and they bring in new Sally Balls and MCs every few months and there's no need to re-review a show that frequently. That being said, it's me and you know I have opinions. Honestly, I would have done a whole like theatre trip vlog and filmed the Gala Night of Cabaret but you cannot film inside the Kit Kat Club. What stays in the Kit Kat Club ha- no, hold on. What happens in the Kit Kat Club stays in the Kit Kat Club. I can't even tell you what the post-show party snacks were like. They were great, but I can't tell you that. Anyway, let's talk a little more about Cabaret in the West End. If you enjoy today's video, make sure to subscribe to my theatre-themed YouTube channel for many more reviews, news videos, all sorts of theatre-themed content. And if you have been to see Cara Delevingne playing Sally Bowles in Cabaret at the Kit Kat Club in London already, comment down below with all of your thoughts. I would love to know what you thought of her performance. And if you've seen the show previously with a different star, let us know who you saw and what you thought about them in the role. For now, let me tell you about my most recent visit to Cabaret. Okay, so Cabaret, 1966 Broadway musical based on the 1951 play I Am A Camera, which was adapted from the 1939 Christopher Isherwood novel Goodbye to Berlin, which is behind me on that bookcase somewhere. There is a loosely autobiographical quality which runs through all three works. But what Cabaret ends up depicting is an American novelist who arrives in Berlin, Germany in the years before the Second World War. And he is the littlest bit politically naive. He is reading up on the current situation, uh, but it certainly isn't a factor for him at that time when he begins renting a room on the Nollendorf Platz. Now on his first night in the city on the recommendation of an acquaintance that he made on the train into Berlin, he goes to visit the Kit Kat Club, a club distinctive because there are telephones on every table and the girls and boys who work at the cabaret call you from backstage. There are many extravagant characters who work and perform at the Kit Kat Club. It's presided over by the sort of mysterious and enigmatic MC and the headline artist is a British, we'll say singer, named Sally Bowles. Sally has an irrepressible zest for life, which is a euphemistic way of me saying that she sleeps with a lot of different men. And after being abruptly fired and simultaneously evicted on New Year's Eve, she ends up begging Cliff to let her stay with him. But as the two of them forge a sort of an unexpected relationship and navigate financial issues, fascism, and Nazism are looming in the background, the consequences of which are growing for Jewish characters around them. Specifically, Cliff's neighbor, Herr Schultz, a local market owner who has recently become engaged to the landlady with whom he is infatuated, Fräulein Schneider. But as this plot continues, it becomes impossible for these characters to dismiss the rise of the Nazis, and there is a political undercurrent that begins to surface within the plot. But it's also fair to say that's only really one element of the thing. It's also about hedonism, and it's also 
about despair and it's also about love and desperation. It is to my mind one of the greatest musicals ever written. It has a book by Joe Masteroff and a score written by John Kander and Fred Ebb, whose work you may also know from Chicago. Famously, the show was adapted for film starring Liza Minnelli, in which Cliff, who was American, became British, and Sally, who was British, became American. And there have been a handful of major revivals of the show within the last 30 years. Sam Mendes revived it at the Donmar Warehouse, starring Jane Horrocks and Alan Cumming. That production ended up transferring to Broadway, where it would be hugely more successful, run for years, later be remounted again with Alan Cumming reprieve using his acclaimed performance. I believe that production toured as well. Meanwhile, a subsequent London revival directed by Rufus Norris, current artistic director of the National Theatre, would be very successful in the West End and would then tour around the UK multiple times and return to the West End. But even though Cabaret had recently been seen in London, 2021 saw a major new revival of the show at the Playhouse Theatre, which was simultaneously renamed The Kit Kat Club. Renamed because this revival of the show wasn't only concerned with what would be happening on stage, but the entire auditorium was reconfigured so that it would be in the round with cabaret table seating on either side and an immersive pre-show experience where audiences would enter the theatre via the stage door, go through this tunnel, be offered a shot of either schnapps or other beverages if they're available on that particular evening, and then witness atmospheric performances from the Prologue Company, a group of musicians, actors, dancers, who would set the scene for the 1930s Berlin location. All of this was directed by visionary director Rebecca Frecknell. The production originally starred Eddie Redmayne as the MC, with Jesse Buckley as Sally Bowles. They, along with supporting cast members Liza Stovey and Elliot Levy, all won Olivier Awards for their performances in the opening cast. Eddie Redmayne is currently reprising his performance as the MC in the show's Broadway transfer, which is opening this month at the August Wilson Theatre in New York. I'm very interested to see how the critics respond to that, given that it was such an artistic and commercial success here. Because we are now, what, two and a half years down the line, and we have had many successful replacement casts. We had Amy Lennox and Fra Fee. We then had Madeline Brewer and Callum Scott Howells. After that, Maud Apatow and Mason Alexander Park, Rebecca Lucy Taylor, aka Self Esteem, and and Jake Shears, and then now Cara Delevingne and Luke Treadaway. The focus of the production has always been on having a pair of starry performers as Sally Bowles and the MC. Even though Cliff is a very prominent character in the narrative, some of his material has been cut from this version, and just generally with the way that the thing has been directed, the MC has been made more important, and Cliff has been made to feel a little less important, both in the marketing and in the show itself. I missed a pair of performers. Who did I miss? Amy Lou Wood and John McRae. I saw them and everything. In fact, I've been lucky enough to see most of these combinations of leading performers. I didn't get to see Rebecca and Jake. I also didn't get to see Callum and Madeline, but I was not going to pass up the opportunity to see Cara Delevingne and Luke Treadaway. So let me tell you what I thought of the gala night performance. So let's start with Cara Delevingne, who forged her career substantially as a model, but has subsequently turned to acting, acting in a few film and TV roles. This is, however, I believe her theatrical debut, not only her West End debut, but her first time performing on a stage. And to do that with any leading role, in a musical, when you are not known for musical theatre, when you are not musical theatre trained, and for that role to be Sally Bowles in a major revival of Cabaret in which your predecessor has won awards, that is quite daunting. So before the performance even begins, I give her a lot of credit for taking on this project. And I am happy to say, though it may surprise some of you to hear it, having seen multiple Sallys in this production, Kara is easily in my top three. In fact, possibly of all of the Sallys I've seen in any production of Cabaret ever, Kara may still be in the top three. And there are actually some choices she made in certain moments that I thought were the strongest of any of the performers I've ever seen. A lot of what makes Sally Bowles Sally Bowles, Cara Delevingne delivers in quite a quintessential way. She is giving you Sally Bowles with capital letters. And given her comparative lack of training and stage experience, this may be making some of you a little quizzical. And I would compare it to the performance that Nicole Scherzinger gave 
in Sunset Boulevard towards the end of last year, where it's just so bold and so fearless and so passionate and not necessarily rich with an enormous amount of nuance, but full of theatrical potency and power and determination. Often we have seen celebrities go into theatrical roles and not give themselves over entirely to the project or commit wholeheartedly to what it is that they're doing. And you cannot say that of Cara Delevingne in this show. She is one of the most committed Sallys I've ever seen. Some of the things she does on that stage are feral almost. And quite early on, she leans into the whole thing with an almost animalistic fury. It's a good way of compensating for the fact that she doesn't have the most sort of smooth and musical theatre ready vocal tone, which actually for Sally Bowles, and I know many people will agree with me on this, is not the most important thing. It's not like she's doing Funny Girl where you have to knock these big songs out of the park. Sally Bowles has some weighty musical theatre material and some people prefer to hear that song with a beautiful voice, but if there's any role where I think you can get away with having a more raw and sort of a jagged sound, it's Sally, and many of her predecessors in the role have had that same quality. Natasha Richardson, surely one of the best Sally Bowles we've ever seen on stage. Dame Judi Dench, another. Even Jessie Buckley, who has musical theatre training, did not sing this score as well as she could. Amy Lennox, the same. Because Sally is not meant to be this incredibly sophisticated, incredibly talented singer, she has ended up at the Kit Kat Club out of necessity. She is very much a wayward girl in the middle of an explosive Europe rather than a celebrated chanteuse. That being said, Cara Delevingne still gives you multiple different musical interpretations here because there is the performance she's giving as Sally in the Kit Kat Club, which has a ferocity to it and an attack to it. And then there are moments like maybe this time, which has a lightness of touch, which is more considered. The finer details of acting through song is one of those things that comes less readily to untrained musical theater performers, but there's an honesty that she brings to the material that, again, that compensates for that very well. And the really winning thing about her Sally Bowles is the characterization. Now, like I said in that previous video, I think a lot of what makes Sally Bowles quintessentially Sally Bowles and will be familiar to many people, Cara Delevingne already has at her fingertips because when I'm watching her doing those scenes of saying, do you have a gin, darling? And I was at this wonderful party and isn't life fabulous? I'm thinking this is probably not too far from at least how she is perceived to be and at least how she comes across in public appearances. Another factor is the accent. This is a huge thing because I have seen others in this role before where they are just trying to get around the voice. And without that hurdle, it's a lot easier to be natural. But what other actresses put on as a Sally Bowles speaking voice is just Cara Delevingne's voice. That's not to say she's not acting. She is throwing herself into this role, but it makes sense for her. And a lot of the best performances are the material we already have at our fingertips. Not everything needs to be a miraculous chameleonic transformation. The point of all of which is this was damn good casting. A lot of people turn their noses up to it, but it was. I will also say, because I can already hear you typing in the comments, she is missing some pre-scheduled performances. And of course, we would all rather that that was disclosed rather than her just missing those performances later down the line. But also you have to remember that Sally Bowles has an alternate in this role. So there are only a handful of additional performances she is missing uh, more than she normally would anyway. Now, much like Nicole Scherzinger's performance in Sunset Boulevard, if there is one sort of a factor missing here, it's a little element of depth. One of the things I found the most fascinating about her acting choices was the duality of power and the moments in which she commanded total authority and was so in control of her own decisions and saying, oh, darling, you're such an innocent and you're so naive and I know exactly what's going on in this city. And then the inverse of that, where she could be so completely powerless and fearful and clearly deeply naive herself to everything that's happening around her. Finally, I'm sure you may want to hear about her performance of the title song Cabaret. This is the height of any Sally Bowles in this particular production of the show and in most productions of the show. But the way that this number has been staged is to be completely show-stopping and electrifying. Each of them that I've seen in the role have been allowed to interpret the movement of the final chorus in their own way. And Kara's is just unhinged and frenetic and wild. And that's pretty in line with her Sally Bowles throughout the show.
But she isn't the only new cast member joining the show because she is joined by Luke Treadaway as the MC and Michael Ahomka Lindsay as Cliff. Let's speak about Luke to begin with because if Kara is considered to be a little more of a neophyte in the theatre industry, Luke Treadaway is an experienced veteran. Known for his performances in War Horse and The Curious Incident of the Dog in the Nighttime, I also saw him in Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf, Luke, incredibly talented, decorated actor. Not known, however, for musical theatre. And there's a curious thing that can happen sometimes, which I think has happened here, where very talented, dramatic performers will do a musical, and the skill that they have in infusing meaning and depth into the spoken word doesn't translate into the same ability when it comes to acting through song. Acting through song is deceptively difficult. It's not so easy as just singing a song and doing the same acting you would normally do. That's why it's taught rigorously in classes, in drama school, on musical theatre programs. It is a very difficult thing to get right. And there is the quality sometimes when Luke Treadaway is singing as the MC, where it feels just a little more sung. It doesn't feel like the same amount of meaning is being delivered. And so much of the MC's material is sung. While the dialogue was spoken with a German accent, the singing voice trends a little more mid-Atlantic, a little more Americanized. It's that whole am sing and a song quality where it just sounds a little bit more radio and less like a legitimate character. And I think the MC is so malleable in this production because it's very open to interpretation as to what his role actually is. There is a menacing quality. This MC certainly isn't positioned as a victim of Nazism as has previously been utilized in other productions. It's also not necessarily a queer character, but there's a maniacal quality to him. There's a malevolence to him. Perhaps he's representative of the spirit of the country or of the city. Does he represent Berlin? Does he represent Germany? Does he represent the rise of fascism? There is a lot that you can do with the MC. And Luke very much accesses the malevolence and the nefariousness, which is something that Eddie Redmayne did, but he doesn't quite have the same fascinating characterization and the same physicality that I saw in Eddie's performance. He also doesn't have the other side of the character, which is the charm and the wit. And this is so important because words get repeated in the show. The first time that the MC introduces Sally, he uses the same introduction that he will use when he introduces her singing cabaret right at the end of the show. It's a much more stark scene and his mood has shifted completely even though he says the same thing. And Luke doesn't really give us the contrast there because what he doesn't find is the wit and the charm and the sort of impish, gleeful, sinister quality that warms the audience before terrifying them later on. And this is still early in their run. So, you know, new depths may be found and new qualities may appear. But at the time of the gala performance, that's what I was getting from that interpretation. I just feel as though the MC who sings Willkommen to open the proceedings needs to be inherently more welcoming in their characterization and not just quite so standoffish. Michael Ahomka Lindsay, however, is a revelation as Cliff. And Cliff is one of the biggest problems I have had with this production. Michael is far and away the best Cliff they have had in this role for multiple reasons. Not only because I think he does a better job with this material, but also because in terms of just the way that he characterizes it, a lot of puzzle pieces suddenly fit into place that have been struggling to align previously. The fact that he is a little shorter in stature, the fact that he plays it a little younger, the fact that he plays it a little more diminutive. Already by the first time we see him in this initial conversation with Ernst Ludwig, on the train, he comes across to be a lot more naive and a lot more susceptible to what he is going to be told. Like he really doesn't know a lot about the city. Previous cliffs have come in and felt a little too world weary, a little too knowledgeable, a little older, a little more powerful perhaps. But the susceptibility of Michael's cliff allows him to be completely dominated by Ernst, completely dominated by Sally. He can barely hold his own against Fräulein Schneider. And that works very much for the first time. I also felt as though Michael's cliff had an actual perspective 
on the possibility of his queer identity that gets toyed with throughout the show. There is a hint of a previous relationship with one of the boys at the Kit Kat Club. Sally references this and then later retracts the question, but then uses it as a sort of a loaded weapon in a verbal argument between the two of them later. And that's an element of the show and Cliff's character that is very much underexplored in this version compared with previous revivals of the show. The other thing for anyone who has seen predecessors in the role is Michael has the best American accent of any of the Cliffs that I have seen in this production so far, and that makes a big helpful difference. I will also say that Cliff previously has felt a little bit separate, and perhaps that's by design, because he is very much an outsider in this city and in this community, but it doesn't help him to build meaningfully believable relationships in the show. And Michael and Kara as Cliff and Sally are so mismatched, but have such a platonic chemistry that they try and shape into an impossible relationship. That really works for me. Not only that, but his dynamic with Wilf Scolding, who plays Ernst Ludwig, who is also fantastic in his role and found so many exciting shades and colors in the sort of this revelation of fascism, which is his character. That's a really interesting dynamic. And again, has a couple of moments that sort of hint at the possibility of homosexuality and of a flirtation between the two and his palpable nervousness in those interactions for a variety of reasons deliciously well played, fascinating to watch. All in all, I think this may be the best principal cast of Cabaret that it's had in quite a while. I would encourage you to, if you were considering seeing the show but weren't sure about these new leads, go and see the show. It's a great time to go and see it. And if you've never seen this production before, I have said multiple times, I think it's one of, if not the, best shows in town. I love Cabaret as a musical. I don't think this is the perfect production of the show, but so much of what this evening at the theatre delivers as an experience, combined with powerhouse performances, make it just a fantastic piece of theatre. So those were my thoughts when I went to see the new cast of Cabaret at the Kit Kat Club. Like I said, if you have seen these performers already, comment down below with what you thought of their performances. Thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, make sure to subscribe to my theatre themed YouTube channel for many more videos including lots of theatre reviews coming very soon. I hope that everyone is staying safe and that you have a stagey day. For ten more seconds I'm Mickey Joe Theatre. Oh my god hey thanks for watching have a stagey day. Subscribe! <laughs>